So I'm being asked for a little bit more information about power because uh, this is often used by a lot of people to compare. We use it all the time, right? You look at horsepower in cars, you look in the clock speed in computers, but maybe what you've begun to hear is, is that those don't always really tell you how something is going to work. Uh, that's because power as a specification, these watts, can be stated many, many ways. You may read power output uh, of a device and it may be stated and restated again and again. The most common way of, of stating power is called RMS. RMS stands for the root mean square. It's a form of averaging. So essentially, if somebody says that they have a system that has 28 watts RMS, it means on average it's going to have 28 watts of power but there are a lot of other ways to state it. So for instance, you can state that over what frequency. If one is clever, and for instance, low frequencies require moving large amounts of air, bass takes a lot of air to move into here, well, that takes a lot of power. So if I'm a clever guy and I want to fool you, instead of putting my frequency response from 20 to 20,000 cycles, I could put it from 50 cycles to 20,000 cycles, and I might be able to say I had more power than if I stated it with a wider and deeper frequency response. Another thing we can use to fool you, if you wish, is statements of distortion. Well, we don't want to hear distortion because it makes your voice doesn't sound natural, the instruments don't sound natural, or literally we can just mess up the music so instead of hearing seven violins, we just hear some string instruments. It's just not as good. But is the specification stated with distortion? Well, if you buy fine hi-fi equipment, you may look at distortion levels in the hundredths or even thousandths of a percent. But there are marketers that will put out frequency response or power specifications with distortion as high as 10%. And trust me, you wouldn't want to listen to it because you can easily hear distortion levels above 1% distortion. So a specification that has 10% distortion doesn't help you very much because you're going to turn the thing down or off before you ever reach that distortion level, meaning the power spec you're seeing you'll never get. Another problem with it is the power at frequency, as I mentioned before, or another way of stating it might be peak power. Um, peak power is measured really when we take the device in here, which is called the power supply, which is where we take the electricity out of the wall or from the battery, and we actually feed it into the amplifier. If I drive that power supply to the point of failure, I will get the peak power of the unit. The problem with it goes back to what we just said, which is that's also going to be the point of the maximum distortion. It's not a real-world specification. We're never going to want to listen to this device at peak power. It's a useful spec that engineers look at because some frequencies very quickly may require a large amount of power. So peak power gives some sense in the design of the circuit as to how quickly the amplifier could react to reproduce, say, high frequencies that can change very quickly or a dramatic change in sound level from very quiet to very loud. But without it being related to the rest of the specifications of distortion or frequency response in terms of the frequencies or sounds we want to hear, in and of itself it's just a bunch of confusion. Again, power is a good specification to understand. It can help you understand a, some idea of how much sound it can put out. I happen to think a better useful spec would be the sound pressure level that the device can generate. This is usually measured again, oh, uh, you know, about 10 feet or so from the product, and you can get a pretty good sense of how big of a room it can fill. That, that's really a useful spec that power in and of itself doesn't tell you. And as I sh just finished explaining, there's so many ways of measuring power with so many parameters, whether it's distortion 
or by frequency or for how long it does it, that it can be a very confusing mess. Useful to know, but the best way again is put on that tune that you like, you know what you want it to sound like, put it into the system, play it, and your ears will be a guide. They're fran frankly just marvelous instruments.